Intelligence is a criteria that we often love to judge animals by, especially ourselves. When it comes to sharks, the general public would put them at about below average, which if you ask me is completely incorrect. I was normally going to make this a one part video that was like 10, 15 minutes long, but I realized that with that I wouldn't hit all the points that I wanted to. So I'm gonna turn this into a two part video. Now, throughout this video, I'm going to be referencing a few articles, all of which I'm going to leave a link to them in the description. I would highly recommend that after you watch this video, you give them all a good read. They are very, very interesting, and they highlight some of the points that I'm going to be making in this video. Now, speaking of articles, if we're going to talk about shark intelligence, then first we need to get an idea of what I mean when I say intelligence. Now to be clear, there is no concrete end-all be-all definition when it comes to intelligence. Some of today's greatest scientists have trouble defining it because there is it's a, such a slippery slope in terms of how you define intelligence in a way that you can apply to all species across the board. But the definition that we're going to be using today is one that comes from elasmaresearch.org, which the rough translation of it is Intelligence at its crux, at its core, is the understanding of the relationship between cause and effect. Now, I'm going to make a few points to support my argument as to why I think shark intelligence is much higher than people would give it credit for. And the first point that I'll make is that sharks are predators. All throughout Earth's history, all throughout evolution, predators always had to be the smarter animals. They always had to catch other animals. If a prey item discovered a new way to avoid a predator, that predator then had to figure out a new way to catch that prey item and increase its chances of survival. This little push and pull effect of predator and prey relationships is often what people refer to as the evolutionary arms race. Where this pertains to sharks is that sharks have been predators for a very, very long time, over 400 million years. Now, Sharks weren't always at the top of the food chain throughout Earth's history. There were multiple periods in time where there was something that was bigger, something that was stronger, something that was meaner than them. But those animals are no longer here, yet sharks are. But the reason as to why these predator and prey relationships are so important when it comes to sharks is that understanding of cause and effect. I'll give you an example here. In South Africa, they were looking at the hunting success rates of great whites and when and how often they would attack. What they found is that during high light levels, usually in the middle of the day, when the sun's rays were bleeding through the ocean very, very heavily, the sharks would just flat out stop hunting. The reasoning for this is because the great white attack style, which is ambush then coming from the bottom or below the seal, or whatever prey item they happen to be attacking at the moment, with the high light levels, it would be much easier for the prey item to spot the shark when it was coming up, despite how fast they come up. This is important for great white sharks and other fast moving sharks because of their biology. They are endothermic warm bodied and they have an extremely high metabolism, which means they burn a lot of calories. So when they do decide to get a prey item, they need to get a very good caloric payday and they need to get it with a very high success rate. So that means that the sharks were choosing not to attack at certain times during the day because they knew they had a low success rate. I know that there are times where people have seen videos where there is a seal swimming near a great white shark and they're wondering, why is that shark not attacking the seal? It's because it's lost the element of surprise. For any ambush hunt, the element of surprise is its greatest weapon. When they lose the element of surprise, they're gonna be wasting precious energy trying to catch a prey item that is often much quicker or much more agile than they are. Difference is, the prey items, they can usually go and get whatever their prey is much easier than the predator can. So a shark getting a successful ambush off is imperative to its health, especially since endothermic warm-bodied sharks like the Great White are always on the move and are always burning a lot of calories. Now. Why this revelation in South Africa is important is because other predators, like lions, they would just keep hunting. But sharks knew when to stop. It's that line of thinking 
and it's things and tactics like that that ensure species survival and legacy, knowing when are the optimal conditions for you to get the results that you want. And if you're not going to get the results you want, save your energy. Behaviors like that are one of many that not only show why sharks have been around for so long, but I would argue show their intelligence as well. The second point that I'll make in regards to shark intelligence and why I think it's so high is because sharks live in a very different world than ours. Something I want to bring up in regards to this point can not only be applied to sharks, but can be applied to other animals as well. Now, there aren't animals out there that are solving complex math problems, creating symphonies, or building skyscrapers. But here's the thing that we as people need to understand about animals in general, especially sharks, is that they're not us. Why does a shark need to build a skyscraper? Why does it need to solve a math problem? Sharks are already top predators in their environments. They've already survived a very long time, and they've done so by doing the things that they've been doing. They are not us, and their intelligence is not our intelligence, and it never will be. Think about all the information that the brain of a shark has to process. They live in a world that is much bigger than ours. We have five senses, sharks have seven senses. The way we process our senses is very much in a left, right, back, forth, up, down type of direction. With sharks, danger or potential prey or anything can come from any direction and they have to process all of that. Now, I imagine most of you have seen a shark's brain, but for those of you who haven't, go ahead and Google an image of a shark's brain. You'll notice that it is shaped very differently than what one would think a typical brain looks like. In nature, when something is shaped differently or looks differently, it's because it has a different function. This is why a horse's hooves and a cat's paws, despite them both being designed to walk and run, they have different functions. Now, when it comes to brain shape or brain size, as I know some people will point out, I would like to point you to an article on Sport Diver talking about shark intelligence. And one of the things it states in the article is basically, absolute brain size doesn't matter as much as relative brain size. And luckily for sharks, sharks have relatively large brains for their body size. Personally, I would also argue that it goes even deeper than that. For this, however, I may actually need a little bit of help from you guys. And it's locating research involving neuron density in the brain. The reasoning for this is because there are some animals that are way smarter than your relative brain to body size ratio would suggest. Two examples of this are crocodiles and crows, and some may even believe that this was the case with dinosaurs as well, and that dinosaurs were a lot smarter than we think. But I would like to think that sharks have relatively tightly packed neurons, but I haven't been able to find any research or don't have any evidence on hand to prove this. so. I'm gonna keep looking for that. But if any of you happen to know some research about that, please let me know. The reason I believe people underestimate the intelligence of animals, especially sharks, is because they are constantly comparing their feats and what they do in nature to what we do. We are designed to do something very different. We live in a very different world than others. We as humans, we have very weak bodies. So we use our intelligence to manipulate the environment to suit our needs. Other animals, they use their intelligence to understand their environment so that they are able to thrive in it better. And this leads perfectly into my third point, which is sharks are always trying to understand their environment. Now, I'm going to be able to bring this point home much more in my second video, but if you look at a lot of videos of a lot of scuba divers like on Instagram or things of that nature, and I'm not talking about like Discovery Channel or anything, people who are actively being filmed for like a show. I'm talking about just raw, naturally swimming with sharks. A lot of them will tell you and what a lot of people will see is that sharks are very calm animals, but at the same time, they're very aware and very curious animals. There's a charming inquisitiveness about them as they explore or try to figure out who or what you are. For the record, sharks are sentient animals. Different sharks have different personalities. 
A lot of them have different ways of figuring things out. You'll notice that some sharks will swim up to you very slowly. Some will keep their distance. Some will bump you a bit. Some will swim around you a couple of times. But regardless, when something new comes into their world, a world that they very much do understand, they try to figure out what is this new thing. That's how they've survived. So when a shark is swimming at you very, very slowly, it is not out of malicious intent. It's the same case as if you were to walk into your house and there'd be a lava lamp sitting in your desk. A lava lamp that you didn't leave there, by the way. You'd be trying to figure out, what is this thing doing here? Who put it here? Why is it here? For sharks, it's the same deal. And for those of you who do think that a shark swimming at you extremely slowly is a shark that is plotting to kill you or plotting to eat you, has never truly seen a shark in the wild raw in person go after something with killer intent. Now, let me be clear about a few things. I am not saying to just on a whim, go jump in the water and start interacting with any and every shark you see. Sharks are still wild animals to be respected. But what I'm saying is sharks are not out to get us. They've never been out to get us. We are not special when we enter their world. Meaning this, if you were standing on a pier and you were debating whether or not you wanted to jump in the water and there was a shark that happened to be swimming nearby, that shark could care less as to whether or not you jumped in the water. When we hop in the water, the ocean does not suddenly revolve around us. And on that note, this is gonna be where I end things for now. Part two will be uploaded fairly soon. And in that video, I'm going to be showing you a few examples of human and shark interactions. And what you'll find is they're very different than what Shark Week or what the media will have you believe interacting with the shark is like. Until then, thank you for giving me some of your time. Definitely give those articles in the description a look and I'll see you in the next video. Until next time.